Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about FTIR spectroscopy, Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. So what is the principle behind this FTIR? What are the instrumental components? And what is the Fourier transformation? All these things we will discuss in this video. What is FTIR? It is defined as Fourier transform IR spectroscopy. So here FT indicates Fourier transform, which is a mathematical conversion that brings an advantage compared with the dispersive IR spectroscopy. So what is this mathematical conversion? In this FTIR, we are converting the time domain into the frequency domain. And this conversion is called as Fourier transformation. The main principle behind this FTIR is the production of path difference between the two optical pathways which results in the interference which may be either constrictive or destructive. And this path difference is directly proportional to the intensity of the radiation which is passing into the sample and which is uh, then converted into a wave number. In this way in the Fourier transformation the path difference is related with the wave number of the radiation that is passing into the sample. And this process is controlled with respect to time. So we can accurately measure the wave number of the radiation passing through the sample. And that makes the FTR to achieve more accuracy and precision compared with the dispersive IR spectroscopy. So today in this video let us see the instrumental components and principle behind this FTIR. Similar to the dispersive IR, FTIR also having the source where it produces IR radiation and this IR radiation is then passed through one of the device that is called as collimator. This collimator makes the radiation parallel to the sample cell and once this radiation is passing through this collimator, they can go parallelly into the other component interferometer. We can observe that monochromator is not present in this FTIR. Instead, interferometer is going to be placed between the source and cell. After passing through the interferometer, the transmitted radiation is coming perpendicular to this interferometer and then it is transmitted into the sample and finally it reaches to the detector. So these are the instrumental components in this FTIR. So first one is the source. What is the source we can use in the FTIR? Generally we are going to use the mid-IR region. So for mid-IR region we can use the globar source as well as nest glowier. So these two sources are useful in the mid-IR region which is from 4000 to 400 centimeter inverse. And we can also use a tungsten halogen lamp in case of near IR region. And for far IR region, we can use the high pressure mercury vapor lamp. So these are the sources we can use in order to produce IR radiation. Then within the FTIR important component is the Michelson interferometer. What is this Michelson interferometer? This component just acts like a monochromator, but it works by different mechanism. This Michelson interferometer is mainly having the three important components. First one it is having the beam splitter which is going to split the incident radiation into the two equivalent radiation and it is having the helium neon laser beam which is responsible for the accuracy in the FTIR and finally it is having the two mirrors one is mobile and another is a fixed mirror. So these are the components present in the FTIR and here beam splitter is made up of germanium coated on the potassium bromide which can cleave the incident radiation into two equivalent components. So this is one of the mirror, this is the fixed mirror and this is the mobile mirror. Now the source is going to send the IR radiation. This IR radiation is going to pass through the collimator and it is going to strike the beam splitter. This beam splitter is going to split the radiation into the two equivalent components. One of the component passes towards the fixed mirror and then the component travels towards the mobile mirror and once this radiation is going to strike the mirror they are going to be reflected so from the fixed mirror it is going to be reflected as well as from the mobile mirror it is going to be reflected now what will be the path difference suppose both fixed mirror as well as mobile mirror are at the equal distances from the beam splitter then the path difference is zero because the path difference is zero now the two reflected beams are combined and they are going to be transmitted perpendicular to the interferometer. Now this radiation is passed into the sample and finally it reaches to the detector. So this is a condition where both mobile mirror and fixed mirror are at the equal distances 
from the beam splitter but after time t this movable mirror is going to move suppose it is going to move like this then what happens now the movable mirror is somewhat nearer to the beam splitter so the reflected beams will have the different path lengths because of the difference in their path lengths there is a path difference between the two reflected beams coming from fixed mirror as well as the movable mirror this path difference produces a interference within the spectra which may be either constrictive or destructive and here the position of the mobile mirror is accurately measured by helium neon laser beam this laser beam is going to be passed towards the mobile mirror which can be reflected such that it can detect the accurate position of the mobile mirror in this way in the ftir the position of the mobile mirror is accurately measured which gives the accurate measurement of the path difference between the two reflected beams coming from the fixed mirror as well as the mobile mirror now the optical path difference is the difference between the path lengths of two optical waves which may produce the interference in the spectra and this interference may be either constrictive or destructive what is constrictive interference suppose we have a wave like this and another wave is like this and these two waves are in in phase that means they have the similar crests and troughs now when they are going to interfere in similar way they produce a constrictive interference such that the net wave will be like this so here you can see the amplitude is somewhat increased because both of the waves produce a constrictive interference now let us see the destructive interference suppose a wave is like this and another wave is like this you can see that the first wave is having the trough and second wave is having the crest so when they are going to interact they produce a destruction then the resultant wave will be like this because both crest and troughs are going to cancel their amplitudes we cannot observe any significant amplitude in the wave so a constrictive interference always increase the amplitude but the destructive interference are going to reduce the amplitude now based on that interferogram is going to be plotted in the ftir so constrictive interference is observed at n lambda wavelengths where lambda is the wavelength and n is the order of interference and n value may be any integer like 0 1 2 3 destructive interference is observed at n plus half into lambda again n may be either 0 1 2 3 and so on so based on this constrictive as well as destructive interference where interferogram is plotted such that amplitude on the y axis and optical path difference data points on the x axis we can get a plot like this so in this interferogram the amplitude is measured in terms of volts and the data points are measured in terms of time that's why interferogram is measured in terms of time domain this time domain is converted to frequency domain by fourier transformation now in the fourier transformation the interferogram is going to be converted such that we can get a plot like this where the y axis is the intensity and x axis is the wave number so here we can get a plot like this and this process is a mathematical conversion which is called as fourier transformation so in the fourier transformation the time domain is going to be converted into frequency domain so this is called as ft fourier transformation because wave number is directly proportional to the frequency commonly it is called as frequency domain in this way with every time a particular wavelength of radiation is going to pass into the sample by which we can easily observe the ir spectra where the transmittance can be measured at a particular wave number with high accuracy as well as precision detector in ftir since ftir is highly accurate and precise as well as it's having the high speed of detection so we have to select the detector which is fast acting so fast acting detector otherwise the detectors which are having the low response time should be selected as the detectors in the ftir commonly we have pyroelectric detectors which are made up of deuterium triglycine sulfate dtgs otherwise we can use the photon detectors where the semiconductor is going to be used which can be filled with the mercury cadmium telluride so both of these detectors are having the fast response therefore they can be used in the ftir so that's about the fourier transform ir spectroscopy commonly known as ftir which is having so many advantages compared with the conventional dispersive ir spectroscopy in this ftir monochromatry is not used instead Michelson interferometer is used which is made up of two mirrors one is of fixed and another one is mobile and it also includes a beam splitter which is made up of germanium coated on the potassium bromide 
and we can also use the helium neon laser beam in order to detect the accurate position of the movable mirror. The interferogram is plotted as amplitude versus data points and these data points are measured in terms of time and amplitude is measured in terms of voltage. This time domain interferogram is then converted into frequency domain by mathematical conversion which we call Fourier transformation. So with this Fourier transformation every time a fixed wavelength of radiation passes into the sample so that we can accurately measure the IR spectra of the samples and this FTIR also having speed advantage such that we have to use a fast acting detectors like pyroelectric detector or photon detector. So that's about this FTIR. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.